Good morning. morning. Sunday has come, thank God. And this Sunday we are observing the last Sunday in the church year before next Sunday, Advent 1 begins a new year of the church. And, uh, And this Sunday our focus is going to be on our Lord's coming at the last day and how He prepares us and makes us ready through His Word and with His wonderful gifts. We'll follow the order of worship today that you follow in your, uh, your printed service folder, and our service begins with our opening prayer. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our maker, redeemer, and comforter, we're assembled in your presence to hear your holy word. We pray you to open our hearts by your Holy Spirit, that through the preaching of your word, we may be taught to repent of our sins to believe on Jesus in life and death, and to grow day by day in grace and holiness. Hear us for Christ's sake. Amen. Our first hymn for today, hymn number 543, we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3, and let us rise for the third verse. Hymn 543, verses 1, 2, and 3. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. 
We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Lift up your hearts. The Lord God, according to his promise, is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. By the command of Christ and the authority of my holy office, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May the Lord who has begun the good work in you bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Please be seated. I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Lord, you have been favorable to your land. You have brought back the captivity of Jacob. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace from above and for our salvation. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Christ, have mercy. And for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Hymn 15.
Let us pray. O God, who in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, confirmed the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of the fathers, and who in the voice that came from a bright cloud did in a wonderful manner foreshow our adoption as sons, mercifully vouchsafe to make us co-heirs with the King of His glory, and finally bring us to the enjoyment of the same, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for the last Sunday in the church year is written in Isaiah chapter 65, and we read there verses 17 through 19. It's written, Behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I will create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the, sound, the cry of distress. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 45 in selected verses. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. The royal daughter is all glorious within the palace. Her clothing is woven with gold. She shall be brought the king in robes of many colors. The virgins, her companions who follow her, shall be brought to you. With gladness and rejoicing they shall be brought. They shall enter the king's palace. The epistle lesson for the last Sunday in the church year is written in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we read there verses 1 to 11. It's written, Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the darkness or of the night. So then, let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation." For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for this last Sunday in the church here is written in St. Matthew chapter 25. We begin reading there with the first verse in Jesus' name. Please rise and honor the gospel of our Lord Jesus. These verses will also serve as the basis for our sermon this morning. It's written, 
The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins rose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Our chief hymn, hymn 544.
Let us pray. O Almighty God, most merciful Father, we plead with you to grant us grace that we may watchfully wait for the coming of your Son, our Lord, that when he shall come from your right hand to visit the earth in righteousness and visit your people with salvation, he may find us diligent in his service and rejoicing in his praise so that we may enter in with him to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Through his merits who lives, reigns with you and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. In the name of Jesus, who knows you, yet only according to his grace. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Long, long night. But... A wonderful one, full of expectation. If only, if only we could stay awake somehow. As you see, there's going to be a wedding, one to be, to be ready for, even though we don't know exactly when it's supposed to take place. And there will be feasting, and, and there will be laughter, and drinking, and, and music, and the smell of flowers, And such clothing on everyone as you've never seen before. And what do bridesmaids do to pass the time as they wait for the bridegroom to appear? Well, they do their hair and nails, I suppose. They share with each other and with the world the love story. How the groom loves the bride, and because he loves her, he comes to save her from poverty and from years of abuse as an orphan, and even from the wreck that she made of her own life. And now he's coming to claim his bride and to bring us all with him into the celebration. There's more than enough to fill hearts and minds and conversation as we try to stay awake. In the gospel that we heard last Sunday, we saw how the world divides at that day between the sheep and the goats. And today we hear again how the wedding party divides between the wise and the foolish. And this is for us meaningful and necessary because some of the bridesmaids are foolish and not prepared Always there are those who look to us more foolish than you and I would ever be. One by one, we all start drifting off to sleep by the warm lamplight as the night wears on. And how foolish, right? But we were made to live, you see, in this rhythm of wakefulness and sleep just like we live in the body until finally we die. And did you notice how in the parable they all fell asleep, it says, foolish and wise alike. So where is the fault here that ends up with foolish virgins locked out of the, of the wedding party and just when they needed it? And this is the thing, they had no oil. The cry goes out at midnight, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. And then suddenly coming awake, five foolish virgins are alarmed. They're caught all unready for him to come. Now, sometimes in, in, uh, in the Gospels, the Lord Jesus tells a parable and then he explains it. The field is the world and the man is God. The seed is his word. Angels are the harvesters, and the harvest is the end of the age. And here, though, here in this word from our Lord, we struggle a little bit to grasp at something we don't maybe quite see yet. What we do see is the unprepared virgins frantic. Give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered and said, since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. Because no one can believe for someone else. 
at the sound of the bridegroom rather than running toward him like they don't even know him. They run the other way. While they were gone, then he arrives and the ready ones went in and the door was shut. And what about us? We wouldn't be so foolish as to know that there's a judgment and yet live as though it's not ever going to come, right? We wouldn't be so foolish as to scrimp and save and store up for now with no thought of the treasures of heaven. We wouldn't be so foolish as to sin against better knowledge and to sin against our own conscience. We wouldn't know what's right and fail to do it, would we? The foolish virgins pounding on the door when it's already shut is doubly tragic for what they missed when they didn't have to miss it but also for this word that they hear from the master of the banquet from from the king. I don't know you. And that's when we would make up our minds. We're gonna be wise. If the oil is wisdom, I'll get some. And by the way, the apostle speaks this way and says the scriptures are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. And then if it's storing it up, then I can, I can pour over the scriptures and I can pray over them like a champ. And if it seems like it's not safe to fall asleep, then I'll pinch myself and chew the insides of my mouth to stay awake, to be watchful and vigilant. But remember, again, how many of us fell asleep? We all did. No matter how desperate you are to separate yourself from the foolish virgins, you knew the day was coming and you didn't prepare, not like you should have. I didn't either. You drifted off. And do you have enough of whatever, whatever this oil is that you need so badly? Do you have enough? Because night is flying. That, you guys, is when things are at their darkest. That's when it's midnight. But before you scramble to try and find a reason in yourself, a reason about you, who you are or what you've done, that you are good enough for him before you try to figure out how you'll be worthy and ready for him and pleasing to him. Here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. And when, when is that? Is that the end or do you hear this already? On that day, we're going to see him in a robe of splendor, but now he appears in a robe dipped in blood. That day, he's going to wear a crown of glory, but now we see him with a crown of thorns. On that day, he's going to sit on his throne in glory, but now we see him carrying the cross on which he sacrificed himself for who? The unworthy the unprepared for you and for me. And that's when you realize the oil that he's talking about is not a a badge as though this were a merit of yours somehow or as if your careful preparations and your acts of storing up and cherishing the word, which by the way, you should. Don't don't, don't, Don't get me wrong. But that... That is not you saving yourself. It's not as if by avoiding sins you provided your own virginal purity. The oil is not something that you provide, much less something you go off and buy. And so if you hear the cry, whatever you do, don't go off running the other way. 
not even in your heart wanting so badly to find a reason about you to be accepted. The oil, I don't know, what is it? Call it faith, call it faithfulness. People have struggled with this interpretation over and over again. Finally, whatever it is, you are supplied when you hear the Lord Jesus forgiving you all your sins. And in the name of Jesus, you are forgiven. And that's it. That's what the Father provides in His Son. That's what Christ won for us at so great a cost. That's what the Spirit of God loves to proclaim and what faith believes and possesses and what unbelief misses. So half run to the bridegroom and the other half run away from him and try to find what he's already giving them, but they don't have just because they don't believe. But as for you, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. And are you, are you flickering? Are you smoldering? Are you almost threatening to go out? He brings his flame with him now and not a moment too soon because night is flying. And cleansed from all your sin, covering you from shame, his words of grace and his, his words of feasting for you our oil in abundance. And did you, Lord Jesus, even think of that? Yes, of course I did, he would say. Did you, Lord Jesus, even think of me? Yes, of course I did. And this oil, I knew that you would need it because I know you. This is his word and by it he blesses and keeps you. Keeps you until that day. And knowing this and knowing him at the voice forgiving you all your sins, you are enabled by his good spirit to pray, come quickly, Lord Jesus. And your Lord answers, amen, I am coming soon. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Please rise. We join in singing the offertory verse. Lord God, Heavenly Father, send forth your Son, we pray, that he may lead home his bride, the church, that with all your saints, we may enter into your eternal kingdom. Merciful God, for Jesus' sake, please hear our prayer for our world with all of its suffering, its warfare, its strife, and as we in the name of, of freedom plunge ourselves headlong further into sin. Merciful God, please remember us in our great need. 
Bless those of us who know you and believe in you to be filled with your word and spirit and speak the truth in love and grant that your good purposes will be well served. We plead with you, most merciful God, to grant a time of peace. And in our time of peace, we plead with you, most merciful God, that your gospel will accomplish great things in the world. Call and gather and enlighten and sanctify precious souls that you've redeemed and gather them together with us to rejoice in your mighty salvation. Hear us, O Lord, as we bring you our private petition. These and whatsoever other petitions you would have us ask of you, most merciful God, we bring to you in the name of Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our next hymn. Hymn number 539. And please note the verses. We'll sing verses 1 through 3 and then verses 8 and 9.
Please rise and let us give thanks and pray. We thank you, Lord God the Father, that you have given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you have borne in your sacred body all our sins and by your blood have blotted out all our transgressions. We thank you, Lord, the Holy Spirit, that you have created in our hearts true faith, that we know of nothing to trust for our salvation except Jesus Christ and him crucified. O oh God, grant us your grace that we may perfectly believe that all our sins are forgiven for the sake of the passion and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so enlighten us by your Holy Spirit that in the power of our Redeemer's death, we may day by day put off sin and never forsake the Lord Jesus Christ until we see him face to face in life eternal. We ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen, amen, amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn. Hymn 538, verses 5, 6, and 7.
O Lord, we render unto you our heartfelt thanks that you have taught us what you would have us believe and do. Help us, O God, by your Holy Spirit for the sake of Jesus Christ to keep your word in pure hearts that we thereby may be strengthened in faith, perfected in holiness, and comforted in life and death. Amen. Once again, everyone, good morning. morning. So good to see all of you this morning. Thank you very much for being here and a special good morning and welcome to those of you who are here today as our guests and visitors. We're so glad you came. And if you haven't done so already, please make a point to sign our guest book, which is located right out the door uh, and into the narthex and right there on your left. Please leave us a record uh, of your worship. We're so glad that you're here and hope that you'll also stick around and spend some time with us after our service lets out. A couple of things to bring to you by way of announcement as we come to the end of our, of our service. First of all, on the back page of your bulletin, you'll find the congregation praise, something that you can take and use for devotions in your home, and you can modify that however you like. Um, and that is not a typo at the bottom of the page. We get to, uh, through Matthew chapter 16 there on Saturday and the readings for the week. And then on Sunday, next Sunday is the beginning of Advent. And that begins with some readings in Matthew's gospel. And so I uh, wanted to make sure to mention that. Matthew chapter 1 verses 1 to 17 is what uh, God willing will be reading for devotions in our homes uh, you know, next Sunday, a week from today. But anyway, coming back to uh, the announcements for this week. Uh, When you take a look at page 11, uh, let's just make sure to mention, first of all, um, that uh, we had our uh, Sunday school and adult Bible study scheduled to get started at 1030, right? And uh, and Carol, how are we with plans for the Ladies Guild? Um, We'll try to meet right after the service. So this morning, yeah, right? Okay, so yep, so Ladies Guild will do a, a huddle and a meeting right after the service. We'll, we'll get started with Sunday School and Adult Bible Study at 1030. Um, also, there is information there on today's special offering, which was designated for the Synod, okay? Um, so if that is something you are interested, did, did you all get one in your bulletin? Did you get a, an offering in your bulletin, an offering envelope in your bulletin? Did it come? Okay, no, didn't get one? Okay, so if you want one, I know those are in a stack at the table right there outside. If you, if you are interested in giving uh, toward the Synod for a, an end of the year offering, those, those uh, envelopes are out there uh, in the narthex if you wanna grab one, if you should like to give uh, for that. Uh, and then uh, please take a note that Thursday we'll have our virtual Bible class on Skype at seven again. And next Sunday, God willing, uh, the divine service of Word and Sacrament at nine o'clock, and then Sunday School and Adult Bible Study again at 10.30, and then we're gonna do the Collegiate Study Hall again uh, next Sunday from one o'clock until five. That was just a great time the last time we did it. And so I wanna do it again, especially as we're getting closer to people having term papers and tests to do. So I'm gonna be here and I'm uh, I'm I'm gonna study uh, as much as I can, and I'm also gonna eat some good food and spend some time with uh, college kids, and and, uh, a special thanks to MacGyvers for helping us to host that. Thanks, guys. And our plan is to do that next Sunday between one and five. Um, Also, uh, again, we've talked about uh, the the plan at this point is to have Advent services on Wednesdays in December. That'd be the 6th, 13th, and 20th, okay, Uh, Wednesday evenings. But the newsletter hasn't gone out just yet for December. And so I just wanted to check with you guys and see what your thoughts were. I kind of had plans on discussing it briefly with you during the Bible class hour. 
So let me know if, uh, if you think that, uh, that maybe it'd be a better idea for us to get together for one big service for Advent, or if you want to keep doing, you know, the, the Wednesdays in Advent, however you guys want to do it, I'm, I'm open to these suggestions. So anyway, that's that. Um, and that's everything I've got right now uh, for announcements, unless there's anything that may have been forgotten or needs... Norm, you're here. All right. Thank you, Norm. And thanks, everybody, again. Hope, please, everybody, do stick around. Spend some time together. We'll visit with one another. And God be with and bless all of you until we meet again. God grant it. I'll see you Sunday.